Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Mister Kalizan, bos. Selamat malam. Ah, you, you, you mute. Uh, Ayo, ah, you. Mister Kalizan. Yes, ah. yes. Selamat malam, tuan semua. Okay. Assalamualaikum. We, we got here, everyone. Uh, this is um, uh, my old friend. I haven't met him for a long time. Oh, He's yeah. my ex. He's my ex supervisor. Uh, my, my. My boss uh, last time when I was I used to work with him, uh, Mr. Khalizan. This is my these are my students uh, in machine learning and UPM. They are master students, PhD students, and some even from the Faculty of Education who doesn't have any uh, 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 exposure to machine learning. Uh, Siapa yang daripada yeah. yang tak ada exposure to machine learning from Faculty of Education? Uh, faculty of Education in UPM. Siapa dia? Uh, students, students, uh, master students, PhD students. Ah uh, tu? Ah uh, Hasimah ya. Ah Sarafida. Okey Sarafida. Okey, this ah uh, yang student yang tak belajar AI ni will be our benchmark for today. Pasal my intent is so that benda ni orang yang tak faham AI akan faham AI dan boleh cerita pada orang lain. Okay. Boleh cerita pada orang lain. Okay. Ha, so step. nanti nanti at the end nanti kita oh, akan tanya oh. Sarah balik uh, 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 dia faham ke tak faham. Ha, that will be my benchmark lah. Ah, uh, boleh boleh boleh. Uh, we are we uh, but today hmm. they, the uh, the students from faculty of education are, are having a workshop in Penang. Okay. So they are they're having two things at the same time here. So I'm recording this session. Ah, me, for your benefit lah. Okay. Let me, let me, let me think. Ah, I forgot to record it. Amal got 20 people lah. Do, do you, semua paham so, bahasa Melayu ke? Uh, any ah, of, ah. So, so we have a variety of people, uh, a student here. They are from Bangladesh. One, some are from China. One's from uh, Iran, Pakistan and so on. Wow, multinational lah. Multinational. That's good, that's good. So, you don't understand uh, Bahasa Malaysia? I don't think so. Some okay. of them are not as good. Just <laughs> not enough. <laughs> okay, if you have okay. any question during the lecture, just ask your question there and then. Don't wait until the end. I will checking the chat room, the chats if you, uh, and I highlight it to you, Mr. Galiza. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So you moderate lah. Better. Alright, alright. Better, 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 better. Okay. Okay, Mr. Elizabeth, I'll, uh, I'll give the floor to you so that we can start. Stay away. Okay. It's going to be a long lecture, right? Today. Yes, I cannot uh, share the screen. Eh? Present now je. Eh? Present okay. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, my entire screen lah. I'll share my entire screen. Alright. Yeah, yeah, Over I... to you, Mr. Galiza. Okay, bye. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I welcome you to. I welcome you guys to this lecture. Uh, there's a lot of original material on this lecture. I hope that uh, with this original material, uh, you'll be able to understand AI better. Uh, I'm sure you're in the good hands of Dr. Ezam and uh, uh, he'll be able to guide you uh, further on this uh, by uh, he will also be able to refer to me if there's any guidance that is required further from this can you guys see my screen uh, yes yes we can okay good so we'll we, the lecture is going to be uh, four hour long okay it's going to be a long lecture we are going to take a break every uh, 20 minutes. So every 20 minutes, we are going to take a, a 5 minute break. Alright. So uh, without any further ado, let's, let's start with the, the lecture. So, so, so the title of the lecture is Deep Learning. And this is supposed to be a practical industrial overview for masters and PhD students. Uh, computer science candidates 
from the Faculty of Computer Science, Universita, University Putra Malaysia. Correct? Right. If you look at the upper right hand corner here, we have the start date and the end date for every slide. Okay. So, uh, we'll try to stick to this uh, timetable that we have uh, here. So, we are starting at roughly 4 o'clock. So, we'll, we'll start Excuse at... Excuse me, Mr. Gandhi. Yes. Uh, are, you, are you showing us the, uh, the slide right now? Yes, yes. Can you see my screen? Tak? Oh, no, no. We cannot. Why? Eh? I, I cannot see it. I cannot see it yet. What? We can't see the door. I, I can't see the screen. Oh, I can't see it. Why? It's visible. It's visible. I can see the slide. I, you can. Oh, I can't. Why? Maybe you have, uh, Maybe you oh, have oh, seen oh, it somewhere. Can I pop it? Let, let, let me uh, fix this first. Can yes, you? yes. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. First of all, I intend to present this in layman's language. Yeah? Uh, so, like I mentioned just now, Sarah will be our benchmark and uh, others who are not learning AI will be our benchmark. At the end of this slide, they should be able to explain a little bit about AI to uh, other people, even though they have not learned AI before. Now, this is the agenda for today. We are going to have an introduction to AI. After the introduction to AI, we are going to discuss commercial issues and strategies. And then we are talking about the synthesis between technology and business, which makes AI competitive uh, for the organization that you are working for or for your nation. What's next is where we discuss about the broader social economic issue about AI and then we'll do the closing. Okay, what can you expect from this lecture? Okay, I'm coming from an industry perspective. You will have a rough roadmap of your journey to learn AI. At the end of this lecture, you'll be able to have a rough estimate of how you are going to go through the journey of learning AI. And then you'll be able to appreciate how AI will be relevant to competitiveness, yeah? business competitiveness or your national competitiveness or your own personal competitiveness. And you can appreciate how you alone personally can make a difference in how you design your machine learning. Because uh, machine learning, even though the formulas appear to be the same uh, across all implementation, but they're actually not the same. So it's how you be able to use your creativity to design your own solution, which can be different from somebody else's solution. And finally, you'll be able to understand the fundamental skill areas that you need to master in order for you to roll out a real-world solution. Okay? The analogy here is like... Uh, uh, you know what Tom Yum is? Anybody who doesn't know what Tom Yum is? Okay, uh, I, 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 let's be participative in this, okay? Let's make it into a conversation. So, so just don't be afraid to, to answer. Um, I think everybody knows what Tom Yum is, okay? There's probably a lot of Tom Yum shops in uh, area of Serdang. Uh, but even though they are all selling Tom Yum, but they are not exactly the same. Some places are better than others. So it's the same with AI. Not all AI are the same, although they come under the same name. Or they, they are coming under the same implementation. It's because of how you personally do your AI that can make it different from how others do their AI. So what is AI? AI is basically, as we know, it stands for Artificial Intelligence. 
Now, the ability of AI firstly is we are allowing the machine to be able to learn, okay, in order to do predictions. So, if we give the, the, the machine some complex situation, it would be able to predict uh, what's going to happen next and it will also be able to tell us how to respond to that situation. Now, if you bring it further, after you'll be able to do a predictions, you can also do improvisations. This is where you can take action uh, against the situation and uh, make it a better situation. And finally, is where you can adapt uh, the AI to, uh, to, to, to create a new AI. That depends on what you call a meta state. Meta state is the state of your AI uh, behind the behind the scene. Okay. Now, initially, AI back in the 1980s were mostly rules that human define, and then they store the rules in the program. For example, I used to program in a language called Prolog. Now, in order for me to program in Prolog. What I have to do is, first of all, I have to know what are the rules that I have to apply. And then I have to codify this rule in my programs. Okay. Now, then there came these uh, heuristic uh, algorithms where the humans, where we design the program, but the program will try to learn what the rules are. So, for example, the artificial neural networks. And finally, now we are looking at a situation where we can allow the machine to program themselves. Okay. So I would like to ask you uh, guys, do you think that uh, machines can program themselves in the future? What is your opinion about this? We have four minutes for this slide so we can uh, have a bit of conversation around this slide. I think hyper heuristics are already designing themselves until a certain area, uh, I don't think it would be too far fetched. Yeah, anybody uh, against that, I, that 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 opinion, or anybody in support of that opinion? Hello. Okay. I think everyone agrees with me. <laughs> Okay, uh, I we are looking now at a situation where machines are actually capable of programming themselves, uh, where AI are able to uh, des uh, to 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 design new AI schemes uh, in order to cater for uh, new situations or in order to adapt themselves to the situation better. So if we look back at the the, the line above where where the machine learning goes through first of all is the ability to do predictions this is where for example humans can define the rules and then the machine can do the predictions but then the second step improvisation is where the machines themselves are able to define what the rules are so this is uh, very important in areas where we we humans are also not able to define the rules and then and then but still the program is written by humans so we are coming to the third stage where the machine themselves are able to write the programs in order for them to teach themselves so we are already at that uh, corner the the, the 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 orange corner where ai can design ai okay it's about four four minutes and we are uh, about seven three minutes uh, ahead of ourselves so here are a few ai platforms that you would want to look at okay uh, just google for these platforms and get familiar with them the first platform which is uh, on the upper left is a platform that i recommend all of you to get familiar with this is Google TensorFlow, uh, an AI framework, and there is a framework that sit on top of Google TensorFlow. So this is a Google uh, 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 a framework on top of framework. 
and the, the name of that framework is keras now what is a framework a framework allows you to do complex things using simple function calls because uh, the common things that you need to do has already been developed by somebody else and these people are sharing uh, what they have with us in open source initiatives so there is another uh, platform called the google machine learning kit that platform you will use when you want to use ai in mobile mobile apps uh, the back end of all this can be hosted on the google cloud ai and then so the, the the first three instances that i mentioned just now all sit on uh, the google platform uh, but facebook also has their own ai which is called pytorch uh, i have been in contact with the guy who uh, who designed this pytorch and this is the ai that facebook uses for their own platform so facebook use pytorch themselves and they allow us also to use pytorch you can google for it and then uh, you can you can see how you can make use of pytorch yourself and we hear about uh, elon musk launching his own ai initiative which is called open ai uh, elon musk by the way is the richest person in the world right now and the china side is also uh, producing a lot of initiatives so huawei for example has also uh, an ai platform and ai initiative a framework of its own called the huawei atlas all right so on the right hand side here we have uh, one of the most compelling reason why we should be learning ai because the the president of china himself Xi Jinping, he believes that China should be in the forefront of AI technology because it is critical to the power balance in the world, okay, for their global, military, and economic power competitiveness. So, China seek by 2025 to bring a lot of innovation to produce a lot of innovation within china itself okay uh, in order to become a high-end producer of products where before china is seen by people to be producing low uh, quality and low value products china is moving into high value added products complex products and they want to put in the AI as a element in, in all these products. So China has uh, an initiative called the Made in China 2025. What is the meaning of Made in China 2025? It means that uh, instead of buying products from outside and instead of buying technology from outside, China government wants first of all to be able to produce technology for their own consumption inside of China itself. It's something called an import substitution. So instead of they buy the products from other countries, they want to be able to produce the products for themselves. Now the keyword is for themselves. So initially this made in China to, uh, 2025 plan, plan to produce products for their own consumption. But then after they have managed to reach some degree of success, it's still 2025. We've just finished 2020. We've not yet finished 2021. So they have decided now we are going to produce these products for the world. So instead of just producing high value added products and instead of producing high uh, technology products for themselves, they are now planning to produce it for the entire world. And we can see in the circles here at the bottom right sector below, what are the sectors that they are planning to uh, to use this uh, including the use of ai uh, in the manufacturing of electrical equipment farming machines 
produ production of new material uh, like for example you know the OLED that they are producing right now these are these are using new material which can be folded and 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 stuff like that uh, for energy saving and new energy vehicles because energy is a very uh, clim and energy and climate uh, concerns are top priority here in this world we already have seen the disaster of uh, flooding in Pahang and uh, how that was a result of our failure to uh, address uh, uh, our own uh, climate and environmental concerns here in Malaysia and numerical control these are like uh, robots and uh, control systems information technology solutions aerospace, aerospace solutions the dominance of uh, the, the, the sky is one of the uh, strategic military and uh, security uh, positions that a country can take these days railway equipment we know how big um, china is in in the railway industry we've we've seen stories of, we've heard stories about their railway projects here in malaysia and they are also rolling this one out in the big way in their roads and belts initiative where they want to build rebuild the the Silk Road, I think Iran uh, is involved in this and a lot of other countries, Malaysia as well. Uh, so they want to build an overland road and also the Sea Road, uh, the Naval Road uh, that passes by the Straits of Malacca. And ocean engineering equipment and high-end vessels, again, this also has some, has, uh, some implications on their roads and belts initiative. And medical devices, because medical healthcare uh, is very important to human life. So you look at the target sector that China has has, has uh, chosen for this. Uh, obviously, that uh, first of all, these are things that they, they need themselves in order to uh, bring progress to the nation. But then they also realize that these are also things that that uh, the world need from them from them. And through the use of AI, robotics, and uh, all this kind of uh, stuff, they China now is a very low cost and very competitive manufacturer. In fact, a lot of uh, things that we buy now is coming from China because they are able to bring this stuff to us at a very, very cheap price compared to what they were before. Any question about this so far? About the platforms or about the importance of AI? Okay, I, I hope that uh, uh, from this slide, you'll be able to see why AI is important. Okay, AI is not an afterthought in our present uh, world situation. AI is part and parcel of the backbone of our situation right now. And because of the importance of AI, a lot of uh, industry companies here on the left are opening up their AI platform for people to use. And of course, when we use their platform, we also have to put our data together with them. But they also pro uh, provide us data. So, it's, so they become a data aggregator that, that, that collects data and shares data with other people as well. Now, remember uh, the, the first item on the list just now was uh, Keras and uh, TensorFlow. So Keras and TensorFlow is programmed using the language called Python. And for those of you who are not into programming or not into AI, it's very fortunate that right now we have this language called Python because Python is even easier than basic for you to learn. So those days, uh, basic was the, the language that brought computer to the rest of the world because it's so simple to program compared to the languages of those days uh, like Pascal or uh, COBOL. So basic was simple. So a lot of people, even even children, were programming in basic. I was one of them. Uh, but Python is much easier than basic for you people to learn. So the symbols here on the left, here we have Python, first of all, because Keras and TensorFlow is programmed using Python. So Keras is a library that allows you to do difficult things in a simple way using Python. Okay, because most of the complexity has already been addressed by the functions available in Keras. And Keras talk to TensorFlow. Underneath Keras, there is TensorFlow. 
You can still use Python to talk to TensorFlow directly by passing keras or you can use a combination uh, most people use a combination of talking to keras and talking to TensorFlow as well as talking to Python itself so uh, you have Python, keras, TensorFlow working and uh, most of the time when you are experimenting with your program you'll be using something called a Jupyter Notebook okay so here I have a video I, this is a three hour video that I recommend you to go back and go through uh, so whenever you see an icon like that, an icon that says homework, this is something that you can go back and you can uh, do on your own later on. But I just want to spend about three, two, three minutes to go through this video to show you uh, what Python is, what Keras is, what TensorFlow is and what Jupyter Notebook is. Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. And in this course, That's the girl. we're going to learn how to use Keras a neural network API written in Python and integrated with TensorFlow. Throughout the course, each lesson will focus on a specific deep learning concept and show the full implementation in code using so the Keras API. We'll be starting with can the absolute yeah. basics of learning how to organize how and process data. Well, next. And then we'll move on to tapa, tapa. and training. If you cannot hear also, it's okay. I, I'll just show you. Later on, you can go back to this uh, slide. I, I'll pass you a copy of this slide. You can go back to this slide and watch this video. Uh, what I want to show you is... Here, this is the API for TensorFlow. So, for example, this is where we try to fit the model to the data. And these are the parameters that you pass to the model. And this is an, uh, uh, a list of uh, uh, parameters mentioned above and an explanation of what the parameters does. So you go to TensorFlow website and then you, you go to the documentation and then you'll be able to see all this, uh, how you want to talk to Keras and how you want to talk to TensorFlow. Okay. Now, thank you. here is uh, what you call a Jupyter Notebook, the Jupyter here. So Jupyter Notebook is a notebook where you can, it's a notebook, you know, it's a notebook where you can write notes and then you can uh, write programs inside the notebook itself so that your program become part of your note and then you can run the program itself inside your uh, notebook so that you can see the result of what you are running. For example, yeah, I show you an example. So, so you don't have to, to hear the girl what she's saying, but you can see this example. Here she is writing some code in her notebook. I think somewhere here is she's she's uh she's put writing notes. Ah, uh, so this is note. For example, example data and experimental drug was tested. This is note. And then in here under the note, you have the program that she wrote. And then later on, she will run the program under the notebook. So this is like a notebook that is alive, you know, so that you can write your own programs in the notebook. So that's called Jupyter Notebook. And the, 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 the code here that you can see is uh, written in the language called Python. And this is the result of that code. You can see the result is being shown here. It's being run by the notebook. Okay, here you can see some code that is in Keras. So model summary is a code in Keras, for example. So just by writing one single line, you can produce result like that. See, so this is compiling the model. Uh, wait, let's see how they, they create the model. Uh, you can see here, this is where you are using TensorFlow. So they're taking from TensorFlow and, and Keras, importing all these capabilities. This is sequential. This sequential is where you are going to use it for recurrent neural network, which we will see later uh, in more detail about this. So once you call sequential, then, then you can pass some parameters here. So, so, so this is what Python is, what Keras is, what TensorFlow is, and what Jupyter Notebook is. Just an introduction to you for if, in case you are not familiar with this. And you can get your own Jupyter Notebook for free. 
on a lot of websites uh, on the internet. So all these resources are available to you for free. Just Google and look for them. There's plenty of options for you uh, to, to start experimenting with these kind of things. You can learn from YouTube like this for free. And then you can just uh, create your own notebook and try to do your own things. All right. I will encourage you to do that. Okay, we are about uh, seven minutes late. So let's move on to the next slide. That was a pretty heavy slide because uh, of the introductions to this thing. Okay. The, the subject of this, uh, this uh, lecture is deep learning, right? So you are going to see a lot of terminologies uh, concerning artificial intelligence, uh, in, such as machine learning, uh, and a lot of techniques, uh, and finally, uh, the various platforms that I introduced to you just now. So how do you differentiate these terminologies from each other? Okay. At the core of everything, you have what the technologies are. All right? What you saw just now were platforms and APIs. For example, TensorFlow, uh, OpenAI, those are APIs and those are also platforms that deliver those APIs. You also have uh, other things like uh, sensors that you can put on a motor car, for example. You put sensors on cars so that the car can drive by themselves. So those are all technologies, which is uh, in the middle of the entire, uh, entire scheme of things. And then there are methods. Okay? Methods are, 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 are techniques where you use this in order to you put together methods in order to produce your platform. Uh, your own solution. So for example, regression methods. These are if you learn uh, statistics, regression is where you try to draw a line that estimate the distribution uh, of your samples. Okay? Or decision trees, for example, that's another method. Now, deep learning, the subject of our topic is somewhere outside here, outside of method, but inside of machine learning. Because deep learning is a method where you use multiple layers of neurons in a artificial intelligence uh, network, uh, artificial neural network, uh, in order to allow the machine to be able to learn very complex uh, rules uh, in very complex situation. Okay, so. Outside of the ability to deep learn is machine learning itself. Machine learning itself uh, uh, means the machine is able to learn. That's the name, that's why it's called machine learning. So there, there are various methods or various modes of learning that the machine can, can, can use that you can use you know, to, 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 to teach the machine to learn. One is supervised learning. The other is unsupervised learning. And then the third is something called reinforcement learning. Okay. So this one allows the machine to learn. So the machine can learn. Now what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is when you combine the machine with sensors. You know, like, like the, mach the machine learning is only to teach the brain of the machine. But the machine need to have eyes, need to have ears need to have mouth, uh, need to have hands. So this is where you use this the ability of the machine to learn in order to produce a solution like computer vision. In order to have computer vision, you need to have a sensor on the machine that's able to, to see things. Or robots, robotics where you, you have the machine with hands or legs or whatever devices you know, to be, allow the machine to be able to do stuff. Okay. So this is how you arrange all the terminologies of artificial intelligence, machine learning, the various methods, and the technology platform into an overall picture. So in this lecture, we are going to get introduced to deep learning. Deep learning is a method of machine learning. One of the methods of machine learning is called deep learning, which allows the machine to learn very complex uh, uh, situations. That's why it's called deep learning. And this is applied in order to produce artificial intelligence solution. Okay, any questions so far? Any question? 
All right, we'll move on to the next slide. So, tell us more about APIs. Sorry? So, please tell us more about APIs. APIs is like this one. Keras is an API. Uh, TensorFlow is an API. So, what is API? API is a library that somebody has written for you. For example, this library, the one that I showed just now. I'm just looking for the library again. See, for example, can you see the screen? Uh, we have something called NumPy. NumPy is a library. It's an API library. So NumPy has some capabilities that we are able to use without writing very long codes because the complexity of that code has already been written inside NumPy. So when we program in Python, we import NumPy into Python. That means we are telling Python that we want to use this library in our program. Okay. So inside NumPy, we have uh, things like uh, generation of random numbers. So we have an object uh random and this object random has a method called ran in which allows us to generate random numbers this is used in order for us to generate uh sample data so you can see here for example you see you see how we generate random data in one single line okay this is the variable that is going to hold the random numbers and here we are saying ra generate random numbers from 13 to 63. So 64 here is the upper end. So when we do this, it's going to generate random numbers from 13 to 63. So then this number is going to be put inside random, random younger, a name of the variable. And then we are going to add this random younger to the list of samples that we have. So you can see train samples here is something called a, uh, an array. And then we are adding this number to that array. So we are, we are appending at the position of number one. So uh, what I want to highlight to you is this ran generation of random number is just one single line. Ran in 13 to 64. One single line. This, this all the complexity of generating random numbers for you. You don't have to write the code in order to generate random numbers because it's already inside that, inside that, uh, that, that li library. So again here you can see for example, yeah, you have uh, something called min max scalar. So this is where you you, you can uh, 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 truncate your 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 data in order to fit in a range of zero to one only. So 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 you you just call one one line and then it does the work for you. So this is what API does. API is a library that that other people have written in order to simplify your programming so that you can just call the function what you want to do using only one line like that and you can see at the bottom here is the result that they got just by calling one line this is the result that they got does that answer your question uh, yes sir as you said libraries are the apis api is a form of library yes api is where you call you call the library using functions like this so it's called uh, application programming interface API is application programming interface. So the interface is this function call. So the library has capability, but you want to use the capability, you use the interface of functions exposed by the library. Get me? Yes, sir. Uh, I understood. As you said, uh, like the libraries in other uh, uh, frameworks, like in Java, there are libraries. Yes, use yes. It by calling, uh, by declaring it and then calling it by using the functions. Yes. Similarly, 
you are trying to say that API is uh, the same the libraries yes correct correct the API is actually the 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 the, the skin of the library and the library can sit for example in java the library can actually sit in one of the files that you are using to program your java or for example the library can sit somewhere else on another server okay so this server can do certain things and you want to ask the server to do something for you you talk to the api on that machine do you get me yes sir. for example i have a, an api I have a library on my server that can cook for you. So you want the library to cook for you a burger. So how do you ask my server to cook a burger for you? So my API has a has my library has an API which is the skin of the library, uh, of the server. So in my API I have something called cook burger. And then if you want me to cook burger, you, you call my API and you say cook burger. And then my API will give you a burger. And maybe you have some parameters in there. Cook, cook beef burger, chicken burger, uh, Big Mac or Small Mac or whatever. You know, so then, then, then I know what kind of burger that you want. Just like this. Just like this. So here you call and NumPy, NumPy Array. So this is, this is a function call. This is part of the API. And then I, I, I pass something to the NumPy array called train labels. So NumPy convert this uh, Python array to something more efficient called a NumPy array by the name of train labels. Alright? Go through this. Yep. Go through this. Uh, this is a homework. Go back and go through this video so that you understand better. This is a three hour video, so you've got to spend a bit of time on it. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's Thank move you. on. Uh, most probably. Most welcome. Anybody else has question? Please uh, ask your question uh, immediately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is uh, machine learning? All right. Just now we saw already. Uh, the machine learning is this area here. So machine learning is where we program the machine so that the machine is able to learn. And then the machine learning means the machine is looking at the situation and trying to define. What are the rules uh, that is at play in that situation? For example, okay, let's say you are writing a program to recommend cosmetic products to users. Okay, so the user comes into your shop and the user takes a picture of herself. And then the machine look at her picture and then the machine is able to show what are the products she should use in order to beautify herself. So maybe you present to her a few options. Uh, option color green, option color red, option color blue for example. And then in order to use the machine, uh, the option color red, you can use this eyeshadow, this powder, this lipstick. Uh, whatever else that, that is called cosmetic uh, by looking at your face but if you put somebody else's face in there you are not going to recommend the person the same products you are going to recommend the person a different product because the face is different and then maybe you are also able to generate a picture of the person if you use this product this is how you are going to look if you use this product this is how you are going to look so what are the rules that you want to apply in that situation? So we don't know. We humans, we also don't know what are the rules. You know, we, maybe we know a bit of the rules, but we don't know all the rules. So what we do is we create a machine where the machine is able to analyze the situation and the machine is able to, to formulate the rules for us. Rules that we don't know. So this is the meaning of the second line. The machine attempts to define complex rules of engagement. Okay. Then the machine, as we use the machine, the machine becomes smarter because the machine refines the rule. Just now it, it, it defined the rule. Then it refines the rule and then it improves its accuracy using more data. So in order for the machine to learn, we have to provide a lot of data to the machine. 
That is why AI and big data works together because the machine will use the data that we give to them. This data is raw and then it will try to see what are the rules at play by looking at the data that it is uh, using. Okay. Now, if the machine is doing all the work, how can you, you as a programmer, you as a software engineer, or you as a administrator, implementer, project manager, designer, whatever, how can you make a difference in this situation? Now, you must realize that not all machines are designed to learn the same way. Let's say, for example, 10 cosmetic companies try to produce the AI to recommend cosmetic to people. Some, some uh, programs may be better working with Asians. Some, some programs may be better working with Europeans. Uh, some programs are not good at all. Some programs are excellent. Some programs are able to take into account uh, the shape of the face. Some program can only take into account the color of the skin. So, it's how you program the programs, okay? Uh, uh, in terms of how you program the programs, the, the, your program can probably do better than somebody else's program. Okay? So, that's why AI is a strategic weapon in business. Because you can see that if, for example, a girl walks into a cosmetic shop, <coughs> In order for you to be able to convince her to buy more products, you have a product like this. You have a software like this. She can take her picture and then she can see what is going to happen to her face if she buy this, 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 this. So you are able to persuade her to buy the products. Uh, so, and because your software is better than another person's software, so maybe people will come to your shop better than going to another shop. Because maybe that shop say you can do this, do this, but then when you go back home, you cannot do this. So people will only buy their cosmetic one or two times and then they don't buy anymore. But if you are able to predict it accurately, so people come to your shop and they find that they can go back and they can really look the way the machine say they can look, then they will come keep coming back to the same shop. Uh, no. So how do you do that? Number one, also the difference is because the data that you fit into the machine are all not of the same quality. Okay, different people have different access to data. Or you may have designed your data engineering, your data collection, or data storage in a different way uh, as other people. So maybe you have data about skin color, but other people don't have data about skin color. Or maybe you have data about pigmentation, or other people don't have data about pigmentation. Uh, or you may have data about demography, or other people don't have data about demography, like age, for example. Age is maybe important, you know, for, for, for those, those kind of uh, simulation. So, and then, uh, when you say data is not of the same quality, you're talking about data granularity, for example. Granularity is what level of detail of the data that you have. Some people may have data detail, that means the data is detailed down to every individual. But some data, some people may have only overall data. That means 20% of the people in this area is, is a teenager. 30% uh, of the people in this area are 30 years old and above. 40% uh, of the people in this area are all uh, pensioners, for example. But they don't know the individual. But you may have individual. This guy is how old? That guy is how old? This guy is how old? That guy is how old? So that is the meaning of data granularity. That means how detailed is your data. And then some data may be missing. For example, you may have data about, uh, about this girl. She is 30 years old. Uh, and then she is uh, a Chinese, for example. But uh, for another person, maybe you know that this person is an uh, Iranian, but you don't know how old he, she is. Uh, another person, you maybe you know how old she is, but you don't know what is her, her nationality. So maybe those are important things for you to, 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 to consider when you want to recommend uh, cosmetics to those people. Okay? And then how accurate is your data? Uh, and how recent is your data? For example, you may have your data from Facebook. So these people claim that they are 30 years old. But when you actually go down to the ground, this is not a 30-year-old person. This is a 15-year-old boy. So data is not accurate. How recent is your data? For example, your data may have been collected five years ago. And you are trying to use five years data now. So there's a lot of changes in the person's uh, profile from five years ago. And finally, how relevant is the data? You may have, for example, uh, data about what the person like to eat. 
So, so you are trying to use uh, that data about what the person like to eat in your cosmetic program. So is that relevant or not uh, for you to be able to 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 recommend cosmetic to a person based on what the person like to eat? Uh, so it may be relevant. It may not be one hundred percent relevant. It may be sixty percent relevant. Maybe thirty percent relevant. Seventy percent relevant. So there's a shade of grey in there, grey area. So, so from here, okay. Uh, how the machine the process goes through is first of all you have to collect the data once you collect the data then you have to pre-process the data this is like for example you want to cook uh, chicken curry the first part is you have to get the chicken but you cannot just take the chicken and put into the pot you have to remove the feathers and you have to clean the chicken and then you have to cut the chicken up for example so this is called pre-processing the data so after you collect the data you have to do Quite a lot of work you have to do in order to process the data first before you can use it. And then part of the doing that is that you look, you look at the data and then you do some planning. Okay, you, you do some planning on how you want to use the data to train your machine. Then you split the data. The third step is where you split the data into some data is used for training and some data is used for testing. So you take the training data and you train the machine using the training data. Most of the data that you will be using will be the training data. So you'll be, you'll be running it uh, over and over again, again the data so that the machine learn. And then another part of data is where you use whatever you have trained the machine to test the machine. To see, okay, I have already trained the machine for one day. Let's see how good is the machine now. So you use the test data to, to test. Or I have trained the machine now for five days. Okay, maybe you have training num uh, session number one, training session number two, training session number two. In the end, you have five days of training. And then what you do is, you, 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 you take this machine and you run the test data on the machine. And then you see after five days, how good is the, the, the machine using the test data. So this is where you run the training. And then finally, you do a testing to check whether the training is valid or not whether the machine can do the right prediction or the prediction is still not correct that then you may loop again if the most of the time the first few rounds your 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 machine will not be learning very well so you will collect more data and you pre-process more data and then you plan on how to improve the way your machine is learning okay uh, by maybe adding to your data or removing unnecessary data or not feeding in uh, false data because if you, you, you give the machine the wrong data, the machine will learn the wrong thing. For example, let's say your data has a lot of inaccuracy about something. So if your data is inaccurate, you feed the machine with the data, the machine will not know that the data is inaccurate. So the machine will learn using that data and come up with rules that is not actually correct for what you are trying to test. Uh, so, so, so you go on in the loop like that, so keep on getting better and better and better. That's what machine learning is all about. So I want to ask you right now, do you now understand why machine learning need to use big data? Can anyone uh, answer that question please? I just want to check whether you are understanding this, this point. Why machine learning need big data? Uh, because of because of big data have variety of data yes true big data has a variety of data all right uh, anybody can add to that answer based on heuristics yes based on heuristics then based on heuristics so so the, the machine need to have the data in order to learn if the machine does not have data then it cannot define the rules Anyone want to add to it anymore? Okay, I suppose you all understand now why. Uh, for uh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Please, go ahead. Uh, sir. Yes. I have a question. Correct. Uh, can, can you uh, explain more about training data and how long? Because just now you see uh, it will take around like five days. I don't understand uh, how long the data should be trained. Okay, uh, that depends on the power of your the power of your machine. Okay, 
if you have a powerful computer it can be very it can be shorter lah definitely uh, and uh, uh, it so depends on your algorithm okay when you write your software later on you have to bear in mind about the efficiency of your algorithm later we'll come to that i will show you some examples uh, but basically you also have to also the technique that you use okay is it very important for you to be to 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 deal with data at a very detailed level you, okay, let's say for example you want to predict something you want to predict for example uh, this guy has started to use uh, started to use Netflix for example you have a TV channel let's say your TV channel is called is called uh, UPM Flix or something like that so you have people who start to use UPM Flix and then what you want to do is you want to be able to recommend to the people what movie to watch okay let's say the, the people have to pay every movie 50 cent you want to watch a movie you pay 50 cent then you can watch a movie so you want people to watch the movie watch a movie every day and then uh, what you want is every time a pe the, the person open your app immediately he see a movie he want to watch so he doesn't have to search he doesn't have to go in search go through the menu no need he open the app immediately the first movie he sees the movie that he would like to watch now how do you know that he like to watch this movie you know this from the past data so the past data is where uh, you see what kind of movie he like to watch and then you recommend other movie of the same type correct but you can also let's say one guy comes in you know only a little bit about him okay he like to watch for example horror movie but you know from other people not from him from other people people who like to watch horror movie also like to watch comedy so there's a likelihood there's a percentage of likelihood that this person is also another guy who like to watch horror movie and because of that he will also like to watch comedy movie so the next time he goes on board you show him a comedy movie and then you see whether he watched the movie or not so let's say for example he choose not to watch the movie so you know oh he doesn't fall into this category he fall into a different category and then but if he like to watch the comedy then you he click on it uh, then you can say oh this guy is the type of person who like to watch horror movie who also like to watch comedy movie then you start to divide people into categories so next time when people come on board you don't you don't treat him as an individual anymore you check for people of his category so when you deal with a category you are summarizing the data you are not dealing with the detailed data so when you deal with summaries you are less resource hungry you use less resource because you are dealing with summary with a category of people instead of dealing with one and every one of the people so imagine let's say for example there's one million people in malaysia who likes to watch horror movie so if you deal with each and every one of the one million people you are dealing with one million people instances but you deal with the category you are dealing with only one category so this is how you see how you can summarize the data and if by using category you find that the accuracy is good enough for you even though you don't deal with the individual but you deal with the category but then just by using category you can still get a lot of viewers you know you can still get a lot of business without having to deal with the individual why do you want to deal with the individual it's the same thing you're getting your business without having to work so much so 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 is also how you want to create your business strategy uh, around uh, how you implement your ai solution all right get that are you are you yes. getting me yes sir yes sir thank you okay good um uh so let's go on to the next slide okay uh we take a five minutes break here we are running uh, late but uh, so that means we may stretch this uh, further lah later but but uh i want you guys to be able to benefit from each and every slide here okay so so there's a story in this slide i want you to get something from this slide and i want you to get something from this slide as well so this slide you must know what is machine learning and you must appreciate how you can make a difference in 
machine learning compared to somebody else. Okay. In this slide, I want you to be able to differentiate AI. Hello? Sorry? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? Yes, you can. Hello? Yes, yes, okay. you can. Uh. Uh, actually, uh, okay, from this slide, how do I, I make a difference? Can I ask something? Uh, how we want to choose the best algorithm uh, based on the case scenario that we are given? For example, for recommend uh, best cosmetic for the person, and uh, at this example, for uh, just now uh, uh, say about the uh, uh, the UPM Netflix, uh, how to recommend the people uh, the best movie to watch. So uh, from that scenario, uh, how we want to choose the best uh, algo, uh, like uh, for example, uh, for algorithm like uh, reinforcement learning, for algorithm like uh, uh, clustering, um, uh, like uh, fuzzy. So what? How how we want to uh, um, uh, uh, to to choose the best algorithm for that kind of scenario? Okay, so, that is a million dollar question. Okay, it's not a sim There's not a simple answer for that question. So later on. In this lecture, I will show you, for example, the difference between YouTube and Spotify. And I will show you the complexity involved in coming up with the answer to your question. So, there is no clear answer to your question, but what I'm going to show you is this is the process that you go through in order to get your answer. Because your answer may be different from the answer to somebody else. It depends on your situation. Depends on your circumstances. Depends on the data that is available to you. So, uh, but I will take you through in our later slides. Later slide, I will take you through examples of how you can decide what what you need to do in order to decide how to choose the best algorithm. Okay. Okay. okay it's, thank you. Sir. It's a very complex question. There's uh, no easy answer to that. The question is like your question is like simple as how do I want to become rich? Uh, so there's no simple answer how you want to become rich or how do I want to become clever uh, there's no simple answer how you want to become clever people can say oh, you go and read a lot of books uh, go and watch a lot of uh, movie go and talk to a lot of people go and ask a lot of questions but these are simplified simplified answer but the real answer is how you want to become clever or how you want to become rich there's no simple answer you have to look at your situation what, how you can become rich may be different from how another person can become rich because of the differences in circumstances right Good, I, I welcome questions and uh, I, I welcome engagement because uh, from there I know whether you are able to benefit from this or not, okay? Uh, any other questions so far uh, on this? I'm not going to go back to this series. I'm going to move forward. So any other questions here? Please ask your questions now. Um, sir, uh, yes. I want to ask, um, based on the platform that you have mentioned before, is there any other... Uh, platform that people are using? Yes, there are a lot of platforms. Okay, there are, there are a lot of platforms and there are a lot of languages. These platforms that one I'm showing are mostly using Python. But you can also find a C++ uh, platform for C++, platform for Visual Basic, Java, certainly a lot of platforms. And uh, some of these APIs are also uh, language uh, agnostic. That means you can use different language against the same APIs. So yes, there are a lot of platforms, uh, but these are the most popular platform that people are using right now. So I recommend that even if you want to start with another platform, you get familiar with, for example, Google TensorFlow first, uh, uh, or PyTorch, for example. You, you get familiar with this first uh, before you use some other platform that is less commonly used. Why? Because if you use, for example, TensorFlow, you want to learn Python, you want to learn Keras. You want to learn TensorFlow. There's plenty of videos on YouTube. Good videos, plenty. Bad videos, also plenty. Uh, and they are all free for you. As compared to, for example, you take one platform that nobody has heard of before and then you have to struggle to learn the concepts using that platform. The concept is the same. Whether you use whatever platform, the concept is the same. Only the, the name of the function is different. The way you do it is different. But the concept and the technique remains the same. So you can use TensorFlow, for example, to learn some of the technique. Then later on, you decide, I don't want to use this. I want to use another platform. Go ahead and use another platform. But then you have already learned using TensorFlow about the technique and about the concept. You get what I'm trying to say? Yes. Yeah. 
But this one is for training, right? Not necessary. This is also for like PyTorch is really what Facebook is using for Facebook, for example, and Google also using TensorFlow and uh, Google has uh, uh, their own AI, uh, the one they are using, which is also based on TensorFlow, based on the same thing. So, 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 uh, so, so this is actually what they are using. It's not only for training, but this is also what they are using for their own solution. So you can also use this for your own solution. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, most welcome. Any other question? Uh, may I know the difference between PyTorch and TensorFlow? Is there any difference when we use these two different libraries? Uh, not much difference. Uh. The only difference is the uh, within is, is how you call the functions and all that. Uh. To know better, to know further, you just you have to go to the to their website and and and, and read lah. But uh, majority the concepts are the same, the techniques are the same. The only thing is that uh, how you call the functions and APIs are different. All right, thank you. Most welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else? No, sir. Okay. Uh, the slides were very clear till now, and the way how you are explaining is also interesting. Things are clear, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Let's take a five minute break. Uh, five o'clock, we meet again, okay? Okay.